Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Tuesday. It's Daryl here. It's not so bright and early anymore. It's about 7 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Okay, obviously I was not planning on making this video. I have to share this with you guys. This just happened to me. Swear to God, every bit of this is true and I want to make this video and I want to share with you guys because uh, I'm thinking if this happened to me, Chances are that this is happening to people all across this country every single day. And it, if this scenario starts playing out in front of somebody watching, you know, if, if it's this same thing starts happen, happening to you, think about what happened to me. Okay, this morning I go, I start to go, I go for my walk, my usual walk around town. It's, it's totally dark here. It's about 5.45 a.m. I'm kind of new to this city. I've been living here for two and a half years. And I've been clean and sober for 17 years, so I'm not really sure. You know, I never partied or used in this city. Uh, I have an idea. I've made other videos. There's this one particular area of town where I noticed uh, I've made, you know, I've talked about seeing people and being uh, approached and other things right in this one specific area that's near a bus stop and a set of train tracks. And I, I get the distinct impression. I've seen people going up onto these train tracks and there's a, it's an overpass going underneath Main Street and it's completely dark this morning. Nobody on the street and uh, the, the street passes under the trestles and uh, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's, there's might be one light underneath these trestles. It's about 50 feet through the underneath and uh, there's all, you know, graffiti all over the walls and everything like that. And I usually, I usually don't see people. And if I do, I'll see some of the same people walking their dog or I see this one woman going to school all the time. I assume she's going to school, she's carrying books and stuff. And uh, this morning, you know, what happened, it, it was especially hard for me to walk away from this because essentially what I did was I walked away. I turned my back on a short, small woman that was distressed, that was sobbing and uh, asking me for my help. And I turned my back on her and walked away. And I have a very good reason for that. Uh, I was listening to my gut instincts. Let me let me explain this to you guys. So like I said, I was about, it was about 545, pitch black. There's nobody else on the street this time. I don't see anybody at all. And I'm, I'm walking up to these, these train tracks and I'm probably about 40 feet away from the going underneath these, these, this trestle and under, underneath this uh, like 50 foot dark, you know, like I said, graffiti and everything underneath these train tracks. And a woman comes out from the other side, a short woman. She's probably about 5'1", five, 5'2", five, a little chubby. And I have my earmuffs on. You know, so I'm just walking, and uh, as uh, as we approach, as we pass each other, I you know I wave hi, and also you know I, I hear I hear noise, and I pull my earmuff down, and I realize she's crying, she's sobbing, you know. So I'm like, yeah, I, I keep listening as I you know I slow down my walk a little bit, and I'm listening to her, you know, <laughs> and right there, right there, you know, I'm 57 years old, going on 58. And I've heard a lot of women, distressed women. I've heard a lot of men, I've heard a lot of people distressed crying before, but there was something a little, I don't know how to describe it, but there was just her, her, the sound of the sobbing. All right, so I stop. I'm just about to go under the, to start going under, into this, under this, under this overpass, and I stop. And, and right at this moment, I see her turn around and look back at me, like to see what I'm doing. That, that right there was a gut that's like, you know, you, when I've been, when I've seen distressed women like this before, uh, usually, this is what I usually notice, that there's, they, they usually say, get away from me, don't talk to me. You know, when a woman, this is, this is my experience, whether I know them or not, and they're upset and they're walking away, they're usually like, don't talk to me, leave me alone, get away from me, don't touch me, you know, so... And, but the way this woman just, you know, she's all upset and she's walking away, but then she stops and looks back to see what I'm doing. You know, she just glances back at me. That was a, a warning bell in my head. So I'm like, okay. So I start walking back towards her and I see, you know, I'm about 20 feet away now. And I'm like, I, I, I try to say it in a sympathetic voice, but I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling warning bells going off. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, what's wrong? And she's, she's like, <laughs> please help me, please help me. 
just come talk to me. Those were her exact words. Just come talk to me. You know, so she won't say what's wrong. You know, I, I was wondering, is she hurt? In my head, I'm like, oh man, you know, this is this is probably a domestic issue. And any second, I'm going to come up and start comforting her. And any second, a husband or boyfriend, you ask any policeman, and the most deadly, dangerous situation are domestic disputes you know so I, i'm thinking as i'm walking up to her i'm like oh man you know the, just more and more warning bells going off in my head and plus she's not saying what's wrong she's just saying she's saying come talk to me like she's getting like get closer to me i get within about seven eight feet of her and that's it you know she's still going <laughs> just help me please help and I'm like, I just put my hand up. I, I don't know what to say, but I'm like, I, I can't do this. This is wrong. This doesn't feel right. And I just, you know, this woman's sobbing. She's asking me for help. It's a totally deserted, dark street. But I'm like, I just, I, I don't know what else to do. I just say, wait a minute. And it's like, I'll be back. <laughs> you know, I had no intention of coming back. I didn't know what else to say. And I just turned and started walking away briskly back under the underpass. But as soon as I turned around, right? What I'm expecting to hear is the sobbing, like louder, like, oh, you know, you're, you know, but you're not going to help me. You know, ah, you're not, nobody's helping, you know, that kind of thing. Renewed sobbing, loud, you know, to, to make me feel bad, guilty. But I don't hear that. I hear a completely different voice. Like I said, before I hear, <laughs> please, you know, please help me in a high women's voice as I'm walking away. I hear her, it's in, a, it's in a whole different tone, a whole different feeling. And I don't know what she said, but she said something like, blah, 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 blah. Like she was talking into a phone. That's, you know, I didn't even turn around. But I, uh, you know, instead of renewed crying and trying to get my attention, it's just, I hear a complete, her, I hear her tone is completely different. And she's speaking like in a lower, like blah, 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 blah like talking. And I'm like, oh my God, this is a setup. You know, and I just start walking quickly under the bridge and I start thinking, oh, my God, if there's any place that this was going to happen, it'd be under this bridge. And I'm thinking, you know, how she just happened to appear coming out front of this bridge. You know, they could have they could have easily seen me coming from up in the on top of this dark train, these train tracks. And, you know, she came down around the other side and she just appears as I'm walking to the bridge. I start thinking about it and I'm guessing here, but I, I, you know, like I said, when I heard her voice completely different, I, I knew for like 99% sure that I'm like, oh my God, this was a setup, you know, and I just start hauling, man. I just start walking as quick as I can. I actually have a uh, mace, not pepper spray, mace uh, that I, I got from uh, somebody. I'll just leave it right there. And, but it's old and I, I don't know if it works. So I get this out of my pocket and uh, I don't, I don't hear anything else. You know, that's it. I just keep walking. But uh, I, I'd say I'm 99% sure. And it was hard, you know, it was so hard, but there was just one warning sign after the next, you know, the fact that she, this, the, the way her, her voice sounded, the fact that when she turned around to, to look back to see if I was paying attention to her, if I was going to come back and talk to her, you know, it just, it just, it, it felt all wrong to me. And the fact that she wasn't telling me what she needed, like, did she need an ambulance? Did she need police? Did she need something? You know, does she need help? And I don't carry my phone with me for just for this reason, in case I get jumped. There's a lot of, I'll put the links down below. There was just a shooting right, uh, right around the corner or, uh, last, last week or the week before, right in this same area, stabbings, shootings and stuff like that. I mean, it's not a particularly dangerous city, but it is a American city. I'll put the links down below. This, this, the things that just have happened just in the last six months. Uh, yeah. So like I said, you know, and you guys know me, you know, that I grew up with my mother and my sister looking out for them, you know, being chivalrous. So, you know, but it's at the same time, those warning bells were going off in my head, you know, that this is, this is wrong, you know, and it was so hard for me to get to that point, you know, as I, I can't get near her. I can't, I have to stop right here as I was about eight feet away from her, you know, and I just like, I can't, I, I, I had this gut feeling that it's, it's, this is all wrong. This is, this is not, this does not feel right. You know, and I had to walk away from a sobbing woman that was at, pleading for my help this morning. And I left her standing in the dark, in a dark street underneath a, uh, an overpass, a train track overpass. But I think I am 99% sure. I mean, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. 
All right, I will be back with another video later this morning. I have another one all set to go uh, about uh, something that happened in Alabama with a, a police uh, policewoman and a handcuffed man. And that video is all set to go this afternoon. You guys uh, have a good Tuesday.